In this video, I'm going to use the least cost method to find the initial basic feasible solution of a transportation problem and that is three sources and four destinations A, B, C, and D. What we are having in those are small squares there, those are the unit costs. So what we need to do there is we need to allocate units in the cells which I've highlighted there. So to allocate using the least cost method, what we do is we look at the least cost on those cells that have been highlighted. The least cost that we are seeing there, we are having a zero and a zero here. But if we have a tie like that, we look at the lesser numbered row. So we start with the row which is on top there. So we will save to allocate in this cell here. And to check how much we can allocate in this cell, we look at the supply constraint is a 20 and the demand constraint is a 15. So to see how much we can allocate, we take the minimum of the 15 and the 20 and that's a 15. So I'll go on and allocate 15 units there. But the moment we allocate the 15 units there, that means we have uh, satisfied the demand constraint, this 15. So we can no longer make any allocations in this column here. So we'd have to cross out all other cells there. So I'll cross out this cell and I'll cross out this cell. But when we are looking at uh, this row here, it had a supply constraint of 20, but we only allocated 15. That means we are left with five more units. So I'll just write a five there to represent that we still have to allocate five more units in this row. The next step now is to look at the next list unit cost. The next list unit cost, which has not been allocated or crossed out, is this zero here. So we have to allocate in this cell. To see how much we can allocate, we look at the supply constraint, the 15. The demand constraint is a 10. We then go on and take the minimum of the 10 and the 15. The minimum there is a 10, so we have to allocate 10 units there. But the moment we allocate 10 units in this column, it means we have uh, satisfied uh, the demand constraint there. We can no longer make any allocations in that column. So I'll cross out all other cells in this column just because we can no longer make any allocations there. So I'll cross out this one and cross out this one here. But looking at this row, it has a supply constraint of 15. We have only allocated 10. That means we still have five remaining. So I'll just write the five there to indicate we still need to allocate five more. Then we need to go on to the next step now. Look at the list cost that we are having. We are looking at cells that have not been crossed out that do not have an allocation. So we look at the list cost there and we see that the list cost is this nine here. So what we have to do is we have to allocate in this cell here. And to see how much we can allocate, we have to look at the supply constraint is the 25. The demand constraint is the 15. So we take the minimum of the 25 and the 15. The minimum is a 15. So we have to allocate 15 units there. But the moment we allocate the 15, that means we have satisfied the demand constraint for this column here. So we can no longer make any allocations in this column. So I'll cross out or other elements in this column to indicate that we can no longer make allocations there. So I'll cross out here and I'll cross out here indicating we cannot make allocations there. But looking at this row here, it had a supply constraint of 25. We only allocated 15. That means we still have 10 more to allocate in this row. So I'll just write a 10 there to denote that we still have 10 more units there to allocate. So I'll now move on to the next step. We are now looking at the list cost in the cells that have not been crossed out or allocated anything. The list cost that we are having there is the 11, is the smallest of those numbers, the 11, 20, and the 18. So we have to allocate in this cell here. To see how much we can allocate, we look at uh, the supply constraint. We had a 20 but we now have a five left. And for the demand constraint, we are having a 20. So what we do is we look at the minimum of this 20 and the five. 
and the minimum there is the five so we have to allocate the five units there so put a five and the moment we allocate five units there that we have now met the supply constraint for this row so we are done for this row but for this column it had a 20 there and we only allocated five that means we are left with 15 so i'll write the 15 there and then i will now move on to the next part we are now looking at the list cost in the cells that have not been crossed out or have an allocation so the list cost there the smallest number between the 20 and the 18 is uh, the 18 so we have to allocate in this cell to see how much we can allocate we look at the supply constraint we were looking at a 15 there but we are left with five for the demand constraint we were looking at the 20 there but we are left with 15 so we are taking the minimum of the 5 and the 15 the minimum there is a 5 so we have to allocate 5 units in this cell and when you allocate the 5 units in this cell we would have now met the supply constraint for this row but when you are looking at the demand constraint we allocated 5 and then we remove it from the 15 that means we have 10 more which is left so i now go on to the next step we now only have one cell that does not have an allocation. So that's the cell that we are considering of this cell here that I've highlighted. And to see how much we can allocate, we look at the supply constraint for the row. We had 25, but we are saying we have 10 left. For the demand constraint, we are looking at we had the 20 there, but we now have a 10 left there. So the minimum of the 10 and the 10, we allocate 10 units there. So I'll put the 10 units. So now all the cells, they have an allocation or they have been crossed out. So we are done with our allocations. So I will now move on to the next step. Just an interpretation of what we are saying is in the table there. So I will draw another table where we have destination, allocation, and the cost. What we are saying is from source F1 to destination B, we are allocating 15 units. 15 units at a cost of zero. So the cost will be 15 times zero, which will give us a zero. Then the next one, we are saying from source F1 to D, we are allocating five units. Five units at a unit cost of 11. So the cost will be five times 11, which gives us a 55. And then on the next one, we are looking at F2 to C. F2 to C, we are allocating 15 units. 15 units at a unit cost of 9. So the cost there will be 15 times 9, which gives us a 135. And then go on to the next. We are now looking at F2 to D. F2 to D, we are allocating 10 units. 10 units at a unit cost of 20, which will give us a 200. So right, the cost there is a 200. And then the next one, we are now looking at F3. To A. For F3 to A, we are allocating 10 units. 10 units at a unit cost of 0, so the cost will be 10 times 0, which will be a 0. For the next one, we are now looking at F3 to D. For F3 to D, we are allocating 5 units. 5 units at a unit cost of 18, so the cost will be 5 times 18, which gives us a 90. And then add all the costs in this column here so that we get a total there of 480 so that's what you are having there is the minimum cost when we have used the least cost method